Welcome to your educational guide for your total joint replacement. The goals of this video are to provide education regarding expectations following surgery, such as length of stay in hospital, which is usually one to three days. How you can prepare for your surgery by learning the appropriate exercises and obtaining equipment. This video will also explain the role of physiotherapy and occupational therapy during your post-operative recovery and at home. Before your surgery, it is important to complete the following tasks. Arrange for a friend or relative to be available after the surgery to help with meals, exercises, driving, and to stay with you if needed. You will be prescribed walking aids and other assistive equipment for your safety and allow for more independence. Be sure to pick these up before your surgery and have them at home ready to use before you are discharged. You will be taught exercises in this video. It is important to practice and become familiar with them as you will be expected to do them immediately after your surgery. You will review functional transfers such as getting in and out of the car or bathtub. Nurses in pre-surgery clinic will also review other instructions. Following your surgery, you will be guided through your plan of care with the physiotherapist and other members of your healthcare team. Immediately after surgery, you can get up and move as tolerated. The physiotherapist or nurse will help get you up for the first time and subsequent times as needed. After surgery, the surgeon will order the amount of weight you can put on your operated leg. Most often, people can weight bear as tolerated, which means you can take all of your body weight through your operated leg as you feel comfortable. As part of your recovery, you will begin physiotherapy in the hospital as soon as possible. The physiotherapist will help you with your exercises. They will also help you with walking. On the day of your surgery, you will be asked to sit on the edge of the bed, take a few steps to a bedside chair, or even take a short walk. Each day, you will gradually increase your walking distance. You will likely use a two-wheeled walker to help you walk, which will be provided by the hospital during your stay. If indicated, you may also practice stairs before going home. You will be discharged once your physiotherapist and other healthcare providers deem you are medically and functionally able to go home. If indicated, you may also work with an occupational therapist to practice functional transfers, such as getting in your car and in your bathtub. A physiotherapist will help you with exercises at least once per day while you are in hospital. You will be expected to do them on your own at other times, so the exercises are completed three times per day. You can start the exercises the day of your surgery. Since you will be doing these on your own sometimes, it's important to review the following exercises before your surgery. Circulation exercises help prevent swelling and blood clots. Continue these exercises until you are up and moving on a regular basis. While sitting or lying, bend both ankles up and down as far as possible. Repeat 10 times in a nice quick pace. Perform every hour you are awake. Bend and straighten your non-operated knee 10 times hourly while awake. You can attempt to do some with the operated leg as well. Buttock squeezes. Slowly squeeze your buttock muscles. Hold five to 10 seconds. Repeat 10 times. Perform three times per day. Quad steps, also known as knee extension. Tighten your thigh muscles to push the back of your knee down to the bed. Hold five to 10 seconds. Repeat 10 times. Perform three times per day. Hip abduction. You may place a plastic sheet or something similar like a shopping bag underneath your leg to help reduce any friction. Slide your leg out to the side as far as possible and then back. Keep your knee facing the ceiling throughout this exercise. Repeat 10 times, perform three times per day. Heel slides. 
You may place a plastic sheet or something similar like a shopping bag underneath your leg to help reduce any friction. Slide your heel up towards your buttocks as far as possible, then slide back down. Repeat 10 times. Perform this exercise three times per day. Knee extension with quads over roll. Place a firm roll under your knee. A juice can or coffee can with a towel rolled around it will work. Keep the back of your knee on the roll throughout the exercise. Tighten your thigh muscles and straighten your knee to raise the heel off the bed. Hold five to 10 seconds. Repeat 10 times, perform three times per day. After surgery, most people use a two-wheeled walker. It helps you move faster and slides easier on carpet. The handles should be at your wrist crease when you are standing straight with your arms by your side. For walking, slide the walker forward, push down through your arms, step into the walker with your surgical leg, and follow with your other leg. The best chair to use after surgery is one that has a sturdy back and armrests. If your seat is too low, you can add a firm cushion. To sit, back up to the chair until you feel the chair at the back of your legs. Extend your operated leg forward slightly, reach back for the armrests, and slowly lower yourself to the chair. To get up from the chair, slide forward on the chair, extend your surgical leg, and stand up using your legs and arms for support. To go up the stairs, grasp the railing with one hand and step up onto the first step with your good leg first, followed by your crutch or cane and then your surgical leg. Continue this way one step at a time. When going downstairs, grasp the railing, place the crutch or the cane one step below and step down with the surgical leg, followed by the good leg. Repeat one step at a time. Total hip replacement. After your surgery, you may walk and do activities within your comfort with some precautions. These include not bringing your operated leg over the midline of your body in lying or in sitting. Although you shouldn't cross your legs while sitting, crossing your ankles is fine. Do not forcefully or excessively bend your hip at the waist, however you may bend within your comfort. Also, it's preferred if you don't lie on your operated side, which will probably not be comfortable anyway. It is normal to have swelling and discomfort in your hip after surgery. The swelling can sometimes even go down to your foot. It settles down considerably within the first six weeks. Swelling or discomfort may increase temporarily while stretching or doing your hip exercises. This is normal and is not causing any damage. To minimize discomfort and swelling, you should move frequently, perform your exercises, use pain medication as needed, and elevate your leg as needed. After surgery, your surgeon will order the amount of weight you can put on your operated leg. Most often, people can weight bear as tolerated, which means you can take all of your body weight through your operated leg as you feel comfortable. Sometimes the surgeon will order partial weight bear or toe touch weight bear after your surgery. Your physiotherapist will help to teach you how much weight you're able to put on your operated leg and how to walk safely. After discharge from hospital, it's important to continue with your exercises three times per day and walking as tolerated to help progress your strength and mobility and help prevent any complications. The exercises will eventually become easier to do and will be advanced to include strengthening at your six week appointment with your surgeon. At your pre-surgery appointment, you will meet with an occupational therapist. They will discuss functional transfers, such as in and out of the car and bath. They will provide advice and education on dressing techniques. 
They will also prescribe appropriate equipment you will need for after your surgery at home, such as a raised toilet seat and tub transfer bench. If there are concerns about any of the above topics during your admission in hospital, they will also meet with you and practice these if needed. If you do have further questions, you can also request to speak with an occupational therapist during your admission. To get into bed, back up to the bed and extend your surgical leg if needed for comfort. Using your leg and arms, slide back on the bed. Turn your body as you lift your legs into the bed. If possible, lead with your non-operated leg. To get up, slide your body to the edge of the bed. Lower your leg off the bed while lifting your body until you are sitting up. Extend your surgical leg and use your arms and good leg to lift yourself up off the bed if needed. A raised toilet seat can bring the toilet higher and make it easier to get on and off. It's important to support your arms when getting on and off of the toilet. Some raised toilet seats have built-in armrests. If you are not using armrests, a bathroom countertop should be close enough that you can push up from it to stand. To sit, back up to the toilet until you feel it against your legs. Extend your surgical leg, reach back for the armrests, and slowly lower yourself onto the seat. To get up from the toilet, slide forward on the seat, extend your surgical leg, and stand up using your arms for support. Make sure you press up on both armrests so that the device remains steady. Never use a towel rack or a toilet paper holder to pull yourself up from the toilet. These could easily come away from the wall and cause you to fall. If you need extra support in the bathroom, consider installing grab bars. Before getting into your car, make sure the passenger seat is pushed back. If you had hip surgery, you may place a seat cushion on top of the seat if needed. When you approach your car, back up to the seat and extend your surgical leg. Using your arms for support, lower yourself to the seat. Slide back as far as you can across the seat, then bring both of your legs into the car. To get out of the car, ease your legs out and slide to the edge of your seat. Extend your surgical leg and stand up using your legs and arms for support. Use a tub transfer bench to get in and out of the bathtub. Two legs of the bench are inside the tub and two are outside. You may also use a bath chair. The bench or chair should be adjusted to be above your knee height. If you had hip surgery, you may want to attach a handheld shower hose to the bench. Turn the water on before getting into the tub. Use a non-slip bath mat both inside and outside of the tub for your safety. When you reach the tub, back up to the bench, extend your operated leg, and use your hands for support to sit down. Slide to the back of the bench and swing your legs into the tub. To get out of the tub, bring your legs to the side and swing them over the bathtub. Hold on to the bench, extend your operated leg, and then push with your arms to stand up. This video was hopefully informative and will help you in preparation for your surgery. You can refer back to this slideshow at any time to review the information provided or refer to your patient guide for total joint replacement, which was given to you at your pre-surgery appointment. If you have further questions, don't hesitate to speak with your physiotherapist or occupational therapist.